Hi, I'm Robert Spencer. Welcome to Moving Beyond. I have a question for you today. Are you too stiff? Just about everybody I know thinks they're too stiff. Now, when we feel stiff, it usually means that we don't bend well enough or we don't have enough range of motion through certain movements like we think we should. Muscles often get the blame for this stiffness. You hear all the time people say things like, my hamstrings are too short or my low back muscles are too tight. Now there are lots of factors that go into whether we're stiff or flexible in a given moment or in general. To be sure, genetics and personal history have something to do with it. If you were born with long muscles and long ligaments and loose joints, you'll be more limber and supple than the rest of us. If you developed an image of being a flexible person due to very early participation in activities like ballet and gymnastics and martial arts, chances are you will grow up to be a little more flexible. But it's not too late for the rest of us. There are factors we can influence. Now, every muscle has its true anatomical length but we may not be able to release the muscle into its true length for a variety of reasons. These are generally inadvertent or unconscious contractions in the musculature that we hold without even knowing it. And contraction makes the muscle act like it's shorter. We generate this kind of stiffness in a variety of common patterns, some of which are things like holding the breath, or bracing, or clenching, or making a lot of efforts into or against the movement. All of that produces contraction, and of course a contracted muscle is a shorter muscle. Now how we organize ourselves to do a movement is also really important, and I'd like to illustrate that one with you by using an old pattern that we've, we've all got a lot of familiarity with, and that's standing up, bending over to touch your toes without bending your knees. My good friend Gail Everharder has volunteered to let me take some pictures of her illustrating a way that works pretty easily for touching the toes in this way. And she's also going to demonstrate a pattern of organization that makes it absolutely impossible to touch your toes. And one or more elements of that pattern are present in just about everybody I know who cannot touch their toes. So let's save a thousand words and go look at Gail's pictures. Okay, here's Gail demonstrating a way of trying to touch the toes that positively will not work. This is not the way she would usually do it. She's doing this because I've asked her to demonstrate this pattern. But perhaps the biggest problem with this pattern is you can see that she is hinging forward at her waist. Now the waist is not a very good hinge, especially compared to the hip joints. For Gail, her hip joints are probably close to four inches lower than her waist, so she's starting with a four inch deficit right from the beginning. Now, you can see that to bend at the waist, like she's doing, she has to contract her abdominal muscles, and this puts a big curve through her lower back and up into her middle back. You can see her chest is actually raised up farther from the floor, making the reach to the floor even farther and more difficult. Now, if she were to push pretty hard, she would have her hands closer to her toes than she does now, but there is no way that her hamstrings can become flexible enough and long enough to make up for that deficit. So we move then. I ask her, let's fix this a little bit, see what we can do to improve it. Take your fingertips, find your hip joints, which is in that fold where your legs join your pelvis deep in your groin. Put your fingertips there about where your hip joints are and guide yourself to hinge and bend over where your fingers are. Now look how flat her back has become just from that. We could go on with this and do more. We could help her to soften her belly muscles even more, to hollow her lower back, and to find a way that she can extend her entire spine a little more. But we don't have to do that, particularly with Gail. We just say, look, bend at your hip joints and reach forward, and she bends over and touches the floor without much problem at all. Now let's put both of these pictures in the same frame so you can see the difference. Look at what a change happens just from using a hinge that is built to be a real hinge and that's the hip joints. On the left she's bending from the waist and this causes this upward rise and curve in the back. At the right she is bending from the hip joints. Her back is much flatter and it allows her chest to come much closer to the floor and then it's not a big deal to bring her 
fingertips down to touch the floor. As I said, we could refine this a little more. She could have her back a little straighter, knees a little straighter, but you get the idea that this is hugely better than her initial way, and that initial way is characteristic in one or more ways of people who usually have trouble touching their toes. So in conclusion, I'd like to offer you a couple of ideas to consider. First, flexibility may be something we do rather than something we have. And likewise, stiffness may be something we do rather than something we are. So with that in mind, I give you Mr. Spock's Vulcan farewell, live long and prosper, and we'll see you next time.